we had a web panel that displayed customer details. Now let's say we want the user to be able to filter the information displayed by customer name. In order to do this, we'll need to create a variable and add it within a table with one row and two columns, so that the controls are aligned. This variable will be called the same as the attribute. So it'll automatically base its data type on the attributes. And we'll associate a text to it. Remember that variables in the fixed part, that is, outside grids, are used for information input, unless otherwise stated. Now we just need to tell the grid to load only those customers that match the value entered by the user in that variable. How? Let's go to the grid and among its properties, find the conditions property. Here's where we need to establish the conditions the corresponding records from the database must comply with in order to be loaded into the grid. We previously said the grid has something like an implicit for each. Then, the conditions would be like its where clauses. This way, we indicate that the attribute's value must begin with or contain whatever is entered into the variable. Let's see what this looks like. The filter to be applied to the records in the base table, so that these are loaded into the grid, is appearing in the browsing list. Here we can see all the customers whose names begin with the letter B, followed by letter E, or that contain the letters SU somewhere. Every time we change the variable value, the grid is automatically loaded again with the data that comply with the new filter condition. So when the variable is left empty again, a refresh event is produced after which the database is accessed in order to load the information again. This is done according to the records that comply with the conditions and running the code found within the load event before loading each one. If you now modify the variable value, the refresh by which the database is accessed is produced again, and for each record that complies with the conditions, it runs the load event. What determines that in changing the variable value a refresh occurs and the database is accessed in order to load the information again? The value taken by the web panel's automatic refresh property. That is, when the variables present in the conditions change. In our next video, we'll look at when and how to add code to the refresh event.